What's up, guys? Welcome back to Jedi Jive. My name is Mike, and I'm super excited because Bad Batch Episode 4 is ready to go. I love the first three episodes. In fact, the first three episodes have exceeded my expectations, and I'm actually to the point where I'm like fully invested now. And characters like Omega are, you know, stealing the show, but there's obviously like a big crew of characters, including the rest of the Bad Batch, the Kemi Noans. Now we have Admiral Rampart in addition to Grand Moff Tarkin and obviously Saw Gerrera and his people. So there's a lot of different um, angles that uh, we can come at in terms of where we're going to go for a storyline. There's a lot of different uh, ways we can go. But right now, Omega's been sort of set up to be the most important character here. She's still very mysterious. Uh, we know that she's a clone and that she's probably like the Phase 3 clone and the Kemi Noans have been experimenting for a while. Whether or not there's any force sensitivity involved, I don't know. At this point, I kind of hope there isn't because I want uh, Omega to, to be special for her own reasons, which it sure seems, seems she is. But she's at this point, she's built uh, a bond with the other members of the Batch, particularly Hunter and obviously Wrecker too, who just built her her own bedroom and gave her his Lula doll. So... Unfortunately, I personally feel like that's just setting us up for tragedy. Uh, Wrecker really seems like his life is probably going to be in danger at some point because he's just too lovable to to get off safe. And, and I, I do not feel safe about his future, unfortunately. But Omega is a very interesting character, and it seems as though she's got these abilities, these burgeoning abilities. Um, uh, it really seems like she sort of shares all of the qualities of the other members of the Bad Batch, except maybe perhaps Wrecker's super strength. But it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. At this point, Admiral Rampart is using these new conscripted soldiers. Uh, he's testing them out, and Crosshair is the leader. And we've seen a couple of scenes that... Let's see, I mean, we saw Wrecker talking about bumping his head, and it really seemed like they were hinting at the fact that his chip was going to start going off, and that malfunction is going to... It's going to throw a wrench in the system here. And then Crosshair, it showed him contemplating sitting in the barracks kind of thinking about uh thinking about stuff and what you know remembering his brothers whether or not that implies that crosshair has the ability to be saved and might come back who knows but there's a lot going on a lot can happen and we got a lot of episodes left this is only the fourth episode and i believe there's 16 so a lot they can they can pick up any of these storylines and have a lot of fun with it so i'm ready to jump in and see what they do this this episode um cornered it's called Seems like they're going to basically start getting on the run here. So things are going to start picking up quickly, and I'm ready to do it. Let's jump in and have some fun. Idafloor. That's where we'll go. Idafloor. I've been stuck on Kamino my whole life. Can't we explore? Not right now. We don't have enough fuel, and we are also entirely out of rations. Comchatter has our ship's signature on a wanted list. By my calculations, the closest planet is Pantora. Pantora. All right. Maybe we'll see some familiar faces. Docking Bay reminiscent of Mos Eisley's. Why'd you tell me we're out of rations? Now I'm starving! <laughs> you fellas here for repairs? Just a minor oh, it's an Ugnaught. <clears throat> Just need to scan your ship in. Are you sure about that? I suppose I could skip that step. That was easy. <clears throat> Aren't you uh, forgetting something? You gotta I pay him. Could, right. If I had some incentive. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. This is Raspar 6 at Row Station. <laughs> and he immediately rats him out. Word on the channels is you're looking for a certain modified Omicron. Oh, there she is. Fennec Shand. Okay, so she's already after them. I'll make it well worth your while. Nice. Ming Na Wen sounding great. So they're gonna have Fennec Shand on their tail? Oh no. You can't sell that explosive. And it's the only thing we have worth any money. You want to eat, don't you? That explosive's gonna come handy. Just wait. You stick out too much. Oh, and you don't? Not dressed like this. <laughs> nice. Oh, was that a Melu run? Okay. 
So the troops are being applauded. What are they celebrating? The end of the war. There's Rampart again. Lots of propaganda. Thanks to the generosity of the new Galactic Empire. Cool, man. I love these marketplace scenes. This almost feels like Galaxy's Edge. Oh boy. Break it, you buy it! Sorry. How about you draw it? Yeah, I'll give you two thousand. Give me a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. How about you it, can't Echo? Be serious. We need the credits. Fine, but not at that price. I am worth more than two thousand. <laughs> Make it four thousand. You are, buddy. Yeah, there she goes to get in trouble. Oh, that's like uh, Toradoza had one of those as a pet in Resistance. Oh boy. And now she's separated. Echo, go to your new owner. Whatever you require. Oh boy. <laughs> Poor guy. Omega. Omega! Yeah, maybe don't take your eye off of her next time. Are you all right? Oh, she's got the helmet off. Nice! You seem lost. I got separated from my friends. Not to worry. We'll find them. I am the droid in charge. Oh my! You're not a droid. Protocol droid. You're right, Clint. <laughs> Some astromex. You hungry, kid? Yeah, but I don't have any credits. Oh. Sorry about that. That was not even subtle. You didn't pay for these. It's okay to break the rules sometimes. Are you a soldier? Not exactly. Then why do you have a blaster? To protect myself. The galaxy's a dangerous place to be on your own. If you're alone, you should come with us. Hmm. Now that's the best offer I've had in a long time. <laughs> okay. Omega, step away from her. I wonder if he knows who that is. She was helping me look for you. Yes, Omega and I were getting to know each other. Love the helmet. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> kind of saw that coming. It's the Pantoran police. Rekka, Tech, Echo, I lost Omega. Somebody attacked us. A woman, highly trained. She's after the kid. Okay, so he doesn't know who Fennec Shand is already. And unless you have a team of maintenance droids, it's going to be a while. <laughs> Gear up, fellas. Actually, I'm not capable of removing our restraining bolts. That's why I'm the supervisor. Reported in the central marketplace. Causing a disturbance. She was probably in better shape just hiding behind a box. There you are. Oh, good. I'm with Omega. We're on our way. Oh no. Oh, dude, don't let him die here, dude. I'll handle her. Oh no, you won't. Actually, Hunter did just hold his own. Oh you no. You mess with the kid. You mess with. Well, that was easy. Okay, at least he's not dead. How long is that gonna hold her? Yikes. Oh, didn't see that coming. Same style security camera that you see in the Death Star in uh, New Hope. He just straight up steals the guy's bike. Uh oh. Oh, there you go. Okay. You can thank me later. 
Tuck and roll when you land, kid. How can I find Omega? Hunter's already on it. Get back to the ship. Oh, nice. That's one way to do it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Look out! Oh, damn. Oh, no sh- He gotcha. Nice. She's still back there. Oh, he still has it. Nice. Oh, nice. nice. Fennec Shan is a badass. Yeah, we'll be seeing her again. Love these marketplace scenes, man. Really cool environment. No, they can't leave. Oh, wait. She hasn't me yet. Cool, man. We've seen lots of Pantorans. I don't know if we've actually ever been she to Pantora has before. To be a bounty hunter. A what? Oh yes. Someone hired to retrieve targets. We have to find out who she is and who hired her. I think it's the Kemi Noans. I, I tried to stop them. Oh, you're dead. If they come back. You know how to contact me. Wow, she paid him anyway. That's cool. That's really cool, man. That's consistent with got away, her character. But I'll find her. Oh, yes. Not good. Love you, Dave Filoni. All right. Dude, hell yeah. Um, Another fun episode. Definitely a side episode where uh, the storyline didn't advance past much of just sort of introducing Fennec Shan and the fact that Fennec Shan is after them now, which... I'm really cool with because uh, Fennec Shan, it's, it's weird to say returning because like technically this is like, you know, 30 or more years before we see her in the Mandalorian, but hearing Ming-Na Wen's voice uh, is, is awesome. And as I was just saying there, it was consistent with her character and that she's, uh, you know, a deadly assassin uh, bounty hunter and, you know, you don't want to screw with her, but at the same time, like the honor code amongst the Mandalorians is Mandalorian or um bounty hunters is still there so seeing that she didn't just like kill that Ugnaught she actually paid him even though she didn't get her bounty is that's very honorable and it's cool that they included that detail because it shows that um uh that uh Fennec Shand is you know potentially a good guy at any point and we know that she does eventually fight on the side of Mandalorian because she's you know helping Boba Fett out so even though she's a deadly assassin and she's definitely to be feared, um, at the same time, it shows that she's not like a super shady evil person. Like she's, she's still bound by honor. And uh, I love that detail. Um, and uh, just her character design. Uh, I know some people didn't like her helmet. I don't know why, because I think her, the look is awesome. I love the, just like the orange and the black and the way they've given her kind of samurai robes almost um that, that the fennec shan look has always been cool and i like it and um omega noticed that she had a had a her sniper her blaster so i wouldn't be surprised if uh omega even learns something from fennec shan that she because we know that that omega has the ability to just like absorb information and learn new skills like immediately so she may have even picked a few things up from fennec shan just then and it wasn't surprising seeing Omega like just, oh, like cute puppy. And then she ran and that's how the whole situation started. I had pointed out, I don't know what the species is called, but that little, the pet dogs, there's, they had the same creatures in the resistance show. The character Tora Doza had one as a pet. And it was obviously the whole little side thing with tech and the droids. That was fun um, because, you know, tech is already sort of like cyborgian. So to to pretend like he's a droid and have that be the gag that they're going to sell him. He's like, I'm worth more than that. That was all fun. And getting to see, you know, a protocol droid and some astromechs, is, it's the, that's kind of a backdoor way of getting your C-3PO, R2-D2 action without obviously having to introduce those specific characters. 
And uh, yeah, fun episode. Like I said, definitely a you know side mission in in that like this isn't like main storyline necessarily, but introducing Fennec Shan is really important. And they now they're saying like, oh, we have to find out who hired her because clearly like she came here after Omega, and that means that you know. There's going to be more bounty hunters coming after us, probably. Um, they implied, like, hmm, who hired her? And I think that it's probably the Kemi Noans, because we learned in the last episode that they are trying to maintain their contracts with the Empire, and they need to come up with something impressive, basically, and to show the Empire that their their clone projects are still highly necessary, uh, and that the war isn't over in that regard. That was also another fun detail, seeing that, like, all the, all the clone troops walking through the streets and all the Pantorans cheering for them it gives a cool perspective on the oh like you know the war is over and these are like the troops have come home and they're all being applauded so the empire with you know ramparts propaganda in the streets and all the chain code stuff like we know the empire is like this evil just uh huge evil organization that's going to take over the the entire galaxy but at this point like we still see worlds okay with it they're they're happy that the empire is there and it's not necessarily a big evil thing yet and there's not as much oppression yet it's still sort of this de developmental period where there's a lot of potential and it seems like maybe there's going to be finally peace and order in the galaxy which is what the empire is always talking about even though we know that it's there's nefarious things going on in the background with the emperor and darth vader and all that stuff and finally, like I mentioned, like we've seen Pantorans like a bunch in the Clone Wars. We didn't uh, see any re uh, returning characters here, but although we've seen a ton of Pantorans, I can't recall whether or not I don't believe we've ever actually been to Pantora. Uh, they we've only like been interacting with Pantorans on other planets. But either way, it was awesome seeing like the market streets of Pantora here. That was great scenery. I loved all like the lights. It was reminiscent. Like I said, the, the docking bay was very like, oh, this is like Mos Eisley almost. But then like some of the streets were like, you know, Batu, Galaxy's Edge, uh, mixed with Coruscant and like that the the speeder scene uh through the streets of Pantora had like a little bit reminded me a little bit of Attack of the Clones. Um so, having you know a speeder chase where you're like hanging off of cars hanging way above the city lights like so there was definitely a lot of like callbacks to old star wars like i had mentioned there was the security camera which was the exact model that you see like chewy shooting out on the death star in a new hope i thought that was a cool little detail so you're starting to see little little hints and pieces of like what we know is like future empire you know starting to filter in here and those little all those little easter eggs are fun to start see them popping out so even though nothing story too crazy story wise happened in this episode, I still had a lot of fun with this episode because it was like a lot of good high action. Ming No Wen as Fennec Shan is back, and I'm hoping that we actually get a lot of her character because uh, they they've already showed how how multi layered her character can be, and that like there's actually potential for her to uh, to fight on the good side just like we've seen her end up fighting for the the good guys in the Mandalorian. That could go either way, but I'm excited that the that um, she's here and there's a lot of different things we, that can happen now. So in general, the whole sort of like uh, they're on the run and they're trying not to get caught, like that storyline has already been set in motion and we'll probably see a few other episodes of the season that are similar to this and the like, they've got to make a stop somewhere to refuel and then like avoid a situation before they escape. Obviously, you don't want to have too many of those because then it gets repetitive and it's, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. But in general... Uh, things are still looking up and the action is really like things are really starting to kick into gear here and um, I'm having a lot of fun and I can't wait for next week. So guys, hey, let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.